Gervonta Davis's coach thinks Tank will run over Sean O'Malley in boxing. Hours after winning the Bantamweight Championship at UFC 292, Sugar Sean called out the undefeated boxing phenom, going as far as saying that he had the skills to stop him in his tracks. Gervonta's coach, Kenny Ellis, begs to differ. Hey, gonna whip his ass, man. Yeah. First round, shit. First round, 145, same shit. Tank, Shakur, Haney, all them guys are beat him because they, they boxing. Yeah, but Tank would knock him out. Yeah, Shakur would knock him out. Haney would not knock him out. Haney's not knocking him out. No, Haney will knock him out. Haney yeah, would not knock him out. Not him out. Not, man. I like your confidence. He's but not a man. box. He don't have to punches. He's an MMA fighter. He's pretty good. But they don't perfect punches like boxers. O'Malley couldn't care less about Kenny's comments because he feels confident that a boxing match with Gervonta Davis will happen down the road. Um, I do. Not a bunch, by the way. If you guys didn't know that. I got a decent right hand. I got a pretty good left hand. Dude, I've dropped. I fucking rocked Peter with a left hand. Dropped Peter with my right hand. Then dropped. I was with my right hand, so. I got throw a little punch or two. That fight's gonna happen someday. I swear to fucking God, dude. I just. And people. You know what? When I have these feelings. These, uh, like, like these true deep feelings. Like, I'm gonna be world champ. I would tell anybody, look him in the eyes and tell him that. Because I knew it was gonna happen. I have that same feeling about fighting Gervonta. Like, it's gonna fucking happen. O'Malley also took to Twitter to make fun of Tank's height. LOL, dude's 5'2". For the record, Gervonta Davis is 5 foot 5 and a half inches tall to be exact. Also, a mini tank is still a tank. Now, Sean O'Malley is not everyone's cup of tea. Some love him for his unfiltered persona, while others resent him. For instance, Vitor Belfort was so angry at one of O'Malley's recent comments that he sent the newly crowned champ a threatening DM on social media. Before we find out the full story, please subscribe to Take Down MMA and turn on those notifications. Thank you. Sean O'Malley is in an open relationship with his girlfriend Gabby, and he recently said that he regularly cheats on her. When asked why, O'Malley said that it's because he pays the bills. I'm a king. I pay for everything. I treat Danny like a queen. If I get a little on the side, what does that have to do with anything? I got testosterone running through my veins. It's that yeah. simple. I, I, if, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that if, if, if I was in the opposite position. If I wasn't paying for everything, if I wasn't... You know, if I wasn't successful in, in any sort of way and I was just like f***ing maybe an average Joe, I probably wouldn't, I, it probably wouldn't be fair. But I feel like I'm f***ing Then, you'd have, then of, you'd have to hide it. I'm f***ing Kong, baby. Because <laughs> of what you have to offer. I feel like, I mean, Andrew Tate explains it well. It's status. Yeah. Status. So you, you know, I got status. Belfour wasn't very happy after hearing O'Malley's pearls of wisdom. Quote, it's disheartening to see that many professional athletes end up with multiple ex-wives due to such behaviors. You serve as a negative role model for this generation. I genuinely hope that one day you reflect upon and change this terrible behavior. While you may be a great fighter, your actions as a father and husband are deplorable. Realize that a man who lacks respect for his wife and the mother of his children can never be a good father. I would love to punch your ugly face in a boxing match. O'Malley clapped back at the UFC legend. I think it's clipped from a couple, but yeah, Vitor's gonna meet my ass now. Um, but I mean, relationships are relationships; they work or they don't. We've been together for what eight years or some, shit, doing good. So, yeah, it's crazy how people just—it's uh, like you—you you get married, you can have a girlfriend, you live this one way. Any other way is not okay. That that it doesn't uh, work for everyone like that. What do you guys think? Dana White believes Marab Duvalishvili should go somewhere else if he prioritizes his friendship with Aljamain Sterling over a title shot. Duvalishvili is at a crossroads in his career. He is the next in line to fight for the belt, but he doesn't want it as long as his best friend and training partner Aljamain Sterling remains in the equation. Dana White hates that sort of attitude. Everybody in this room and everybody who watches this video knows how I feel about this shit. Yeah, I hate it hate it and uh if that's why did you even get into this sport if that's your mentality and the way that you think i don't even want the title i don't even want the championship we're friends we're this we're that this is not about friendship this is about finding out who the best in the world is and if you don't want to find out who the best in the world is 
this is not the place for you. You should be somewhere else. There's plenty of places to fight where they don't give a what you do. Doesn't work here. Do you agree with Uncle Dana? Moving on, Dylan Danis thinks UFC lightweight champion Isla Makhachev is easy money. Danis and Makhachev's teams are bitter rivals since their post-fight brawl at UFC 229, where Khabib Nurmagomedov jumped out of the cage and attacked Danis after submitting Conor McGregor. Makhachev was also involved in the melee, although not directly. Should they lock horns to bury the hatchet down the road, Danis believes he'll finish Makhachev in two rounds. I like kill Islam. I think he doesn't make it past two rounds. Hundred percent. I bet you I submit him. I, how much you want to bet? We ever fight fifty k? I submit him. Oh, oh. I, I bet you so much money. Fifty k? I submit him. Dennis is set to box Logan Paul on October fourteenth in Manchester, England. The son of former Strike Force fighter Lamumba Sayers was one of the two people tragically gunned down last weekend in Denver. Police are searching for a suspect named Tyrell Braxton, a CCTV image of whom was released on social media alongside a cash reward for any information. Sayers Jr., an amateur MMA fighter, was beginning to follow in the footsteps of his father, who notably competed against Anthony Smith and Derek Brunson before retiring with a professional record of six wins and five losses. A well-respected individual in his community, Sayers Jr. helped curb violence through sanctioned fighting in the Five Points neighborhood in Denver, courtesy of his Heavy Hands, Heavy Hearts Foundation. His efforts included staging boxing matches in the community. Here is what Lumumba had to say about his son. Quote, This coward shot my son. He shot my son, man. The community that we protect, you know, we try to provide for. The community that he tried to help guide in a different direction that he grew up in, they killed my son. My son wasn't a gangbanger. He wasn't a drug dealer. He wasn't a troublemaker. My son was following in my footsteps. My son came in and put in his work. This is where we changed lives up here, where we teach different things like integrity, self-love, on-job training. My son, he used to bring all the young people in and give them jobs. Moving on. Rose Namayunis admits that her strawweight title fight against Carla Esparza at UFC 274 was extremely boring. Namayunis lost her 115-pound title to Esparza at UFC 274, where the two fighters landed a total of 67 strikes combined in five rounds. The fight had little to no action, and Esparza was declared the winner because she pushed the pace on a few occasions. Fight fans were pissed, and rightly so, believes Thug Rose. No, that was definitely like one of the most boring fights ever. So I don't know. I guess being being the fighter, like it, it feels a little different, you know, um, when when somebody's like, because it's not just a, a sport for me. It's like it's an art, and so you know, when somebody critiques your art, you get a little emotional about it. But ultimately, like you know, that, that's fair to say what they had to say because it was really, it was really nothing really happened. Um, I just. Uh, you know, I was I was kind of in my feelings about it because I felt like, OK, it's it's you know, that there's always this like unspoken thing of like the challengers got to take it in order to get it right. But eh, whatever, you know, it's, it's my fault. How boring was Nama Yunus versus Asparsa too? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. To stay up to date with the latest happenings in the world of mixed martial arts and boxing, please subscribe to Take Down MMA and turn on your notifications. Thank you for your continued love and support, and we'll see you in the next one.